All right, welcome back to this Bayou Time segment. We're joined by the parish president of Lafouche Parish, Archie Chesson. Archie, good to have you on board today. Hey, Martin. Thanks for having us again. Yeah, uh, anytime. And I was looking at your numbers, and it seems like one number's going down, but another one goes up, so it's confusing. But I'll give you the floor and let you explain it a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's been, a, I guess, a better weekend than we've seen some of the Mondays. Your last couple of Mondays, we've had four, 600 cases. Uh, when we come in today, today it was about a 300, uh, 303 case amount. Uh, so you figure about 100 each day from Friday to through Sunday, which is overall not a bad thing. Um, hopefully, like we've said the last couple of weeks, as we've seen kind of these things trickle up and down, hopefully it's the beginning of a trend, right? We're starting to see some plateauing and, and things starting to come down. So the one number that has risen that you alluded to is the number of people on ventilators. Unfortunately, we've seen that number go from about 27 to 31. So we've seen a slight uptick. Um, a slight uptick overall in hospitalizations across. We went from, uh, you know, 44 on yesterday to 54 today. So another 10 people, unfortunately, uh, were hospitalized. But the number I always like to point out is that region wide, we have 191 people in the hospital, uh, but only 16 people of those are vaccinated. So it proves that the vaccination worked. I think that's one of the reasons you saw Pfizer earlier today kind of roll out that full final approval of it. Um, so I think that will trigger some things to start to happen. You will see university systems, um, you will see certain, certain employers now because it's not an emergency youth authorization drug anymore. It's, it's something that's fully approved. You'll start to see some of those mandates come across. And I, th I think you'll see people on both sides of the aisle start to talk about how that affects things. But, um, you know, I think that's why you started to see that, that work because the vaccine has shown that it's keeping people out of the hospital, it's keeping symptoms down. And still why you send that you, you tend to see every public official uh, continue to encourage it. Uh, how do you juggle the different messages? Just yesterday, we were covering uh, an event that took place in Terrebonne where people were talking about freedom and constitutional rights. And of course, there are a lot of people still that don't want to take the vaccine. And then you have the hospitals praying and urging everyone to take the vaccine. And it really is a juggling act when you try to get into people's psyche. And of course, we all believe in and people and their choices and their freedoms, but who that's got to wear you out as a parish president sometimes juggling those. It, it, it does, Martin. It consumes probably at this point probably 50 or 60 percent of my day. Um, you know, really trying to get through to people, and it's and it's people on the opposite side that are saying, you know, hey Arch, we we, we saw you talking about Ivermec, or we saw you talking about not people getting the vaccine, and and you have people who are unhappy with that. You have people uh, who are not happy that we're we're, we're not mandating it somehow parish wide and first of all we don't have the authority to do that i can't tell every every citizen lafouche to go get it um but it but it's a tough juggling act and i, I think you and i talked about this on a show a, a week or two ago that, that you're not going to see any type of mandate come from me because you know as we've talked all along it, it's a decision between an individual person their doc and god they have to make that the decision for themselves and we, we've talked about why um personally i've got it we've talked about the signs behind it. Um, you've seen a lot of local docs either writing op-eds or uh, I, I think Nichols released a couple of videos this weekend with a couple of local doctors um, talking about who also Colonel alums talking about why you should get it. Um, and I think as we as we get more science behind it, I think as you see, there are a lot of people saying that they weren't going to get it until the FDA fully approved it. Well, that happened. Um, so I think you'll see another uptick of it. But there are still going to be those people who, for whatever reason, don't want to get it. They may be anti-vaxxers all around, right? Not just this one, but measles, mumps, polio, chicken pox, all the other ones we get. Uh, and, and that's okay. You're going to have those people. We've we, we've had them in this country all along. Uh, and you're right. This is still America and, and people get to choose. And it's just something that we're going to have to just juggle around, right? We're, we're not going to get mad at anybody. We're not going to call people out because they don't get it for whatever their religious or political beliefs may be or medical beliefs. Um, just like I wouldn't expect them to call any of us out who did get it. Um, for being a sheep or whatever whatever they call us on facebook these days but mm -hmm. um it's, it's a tight it's a tight juggling act you're right and, and let me ask you because the numbers are there when we talk to phyllis peoples or greg stock or you or Gordy, and, and we're seeing that the numbers in the the critical care units are over 90 percent unvaccinated and then you have those that think that later on once once you get the vaccination you're going to come up with something so i see both sides but the numbers don't lie the fact that in that ccu is predominantly unvaccinated people yeah and that's one of the messages we tried to get across martin is not that 
the vaccine will ever stop you from getting it. You, you, you might still get it. There's been a lot of stuff out of the CDC lately that talks about how people who are vaccinated can still spread it just like the unvaccinated people. Um, but it's, it's just something that will help lessen the symptoms. It's something that will probably keep you out of the hospital and keep you out of a, a, a funeral home. But overall, it's, it's just something that's good for the community as we continue to look at it. What about a minute left? I, I know you want to give a, a shot in the arm, excuse the pun, to the health care workers and doctors for a job well done. Yeah, look, Martin, these, these last year and a half has been a, a complete rampage across the healthcare market uh, in our healthcare systems. And the docs, the nurses, the respiratory therapists, uh, all the cancer doctors and all the other specialties that have come in to work the floor and help patients, uh, we all owe them a debt of gratitude and they are in our prayers every night across Lafourche Parish as they continue to help our community. No doubt. We appreciate what y'all are doing. Y'all are under, under fire, too, in the circumstances and uh, during hurricane season, let's keep knocking on wood or whatever we could find. But, uh, you know, it sort of helped pave the way. Lack of a hurricane season, i got to be careful how I say that. Y'all can tend to these things that really become dominant during these times. But thank you, Archie, for what y'all do, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Good talking to you. All right. There you have it. The parish president of Lafouche Parish, Archie Chesson. Uh, we'll take a break, but before, right before the break, don't forget, you see a doctor, or a nurse, or a respiratory therapist, or a healthcare worker, or anyone in that realm or line of work, give them a thumbs up or a thank you for what they do. And you don't have to believe everything they're doing, but they are on the front lines and they are trying very hard. We'll be right back.